because Miss James wants to stand right here like she did this morning and call my client a liar. If the shoe fits, <laughs> see you later. Call the company fraudulent. If the shoe fits, see you later. And here's why they're doing it. It leaves it up for the, for the state, for Letitia James, to just hammer their own narrative. You don't remember? Well, we do, and here's the facts. And when you do that, you're toast. You're absolutely toast. Oh. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what'd he do? And he's gonna react to all the self-snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your very own personal board-certified criminal defense lawyer, accompanied by none other than the content genius we know as Michael Rivers. Today, we're reacting to Trump and the Trump trial, and the government's going to rest in that. But before we get to that, let's talk about who we're sponsored by. We are sponsored by the best sponsor of all time, and that's eSign.com. eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. Let's say you are the former leader of the free world. You were able to handle Russia, China, and all these other places, but the one person you can't handle is Letitia James, and you get your butt kicked in uh, New York District Court. Well, what do you do? Because all of a sudden, now you can't do business. Now you got to have to have proxies all over the place. So you got to figure out another way, another scam. So you have to do something in order to make money. So what you, you send out agreements all over the place because what did you do? You downloaded the app. You get three free signatures a month, but you're going to need a lot more than that because you got to send agreements out to all kinds of people because eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. Uh, I use it all the time in my practice. I, and the reason I use it is twofold. One, it's convenient. It's super easy. And number two, if I need to get a deal done fast, it, it, I can... I email somebody a document, they can sign it, and I got it done quickly. So eSign.com, a very effective way to remotely do business, because if it's not eSign, no one signed. All right, let's talk about Donald J. Trump and the Trump Organization. Letitia James and her crew is arrested today. I, I think they were arrested today or maybe tomorrow. Uh, Ivanka Trump was the last one. But let's talk about the, the Trumps, because you had Eric Trump, Don Jr., DJT himself, and uh, Ivanka Trump all testified but what is the one thing that they what was the common thread through all of their testimony they didn't remember much i don't recall i don't recall that i don't know with the exception of ivanka because i think she's probably a lot classier than the rest of them um early she carries herself better she's not as bombastic but i don't think she's any less corrupt i mean she's she was part of the organization until 2017 and you know even even as late as the U.S. Postal Service hotel that they remodeled. She got $4 million out of that sale. Let's talk about Donald Trump first of all. Let's just talk about his testimony. Now, if you recall, the judge almost kicked him out. And the reason he did that is because he wouldn't follow judges' orders. Let's talk about two things first of all. First of all, it's not just his testimony. He also gave a deposition in this case where he, took the, uh, where he pled the fifth over 400 times. And what happens when somebody pleads the fifth? You can draw an adverse inference from that in, in a civil case. And this is a civil case as opposed to a criminal case. So let's say, um, you know, I pled the fifth on a particular issue. You know, I wasn't, were you driving that night? I plead the fifth. Well, if I pled the fifth, what the fact finder can assume, and here it's uh, the judge, the fact finder can assume the answer you're going to give would be bad for you. In other words, it would tend to incriminate you. That's why you pled the fifth. So you can assume the fact in the negative. He answered no questions in his deposition. And that deposition is part of the record. So then when he testifies in court, and this is why the judge got really pissed at him, is because he wouldn't answer the questions. And then he wanted to just go off and have a speech. You can't do that in court. You have to adhere to the rule of law and, and the rules of evidence. What that rule is, is like if somebody's going off, it's non-responsive answer. So if I ask you, what, what color is the sky? And you would have to say, well, you know, the sky is a very relative thing. And, and uh, in fact, I jumped out of an airplane once and I was in the sky. I didn't ask you what you did. I didn't ask you what the sky was. I asked you what the color was. So if you go off, which is what Trump did, 
on a bunch of other things, it's objectionable, and you can shut it down. Because you just don't get to get up on the stand and just say whatever you want to say, unless you're representing yourself. <laughs> if you're representing yourself, then you kind of can do that. How can you even call yourself Mr. a judge? Brooks, I need to make a record of some I need things. to make a record, too. But that's not what we have here. You take two things together. You take him not answering the questions and giving this huge bullshit response. You couple that with all the times that he took the Fifth Amendment. His testimony is worth nothing to him, to his defense. He didn't help himself at all, at all. He is just pissed off, and he and, and no one's going to fucking control him. And, and so he really hurt himself. But now let's, let's couple that with the testimony of the three adults, three offspring of the DJT. I'm not going to call them children because they're not children. You know, they're in their 40s. Don Jr., he said something kind of funny. He said, yeah, they, they talked to me about uh, accountants doing what? Accounting. Okay, the whole case, this whole case is based upon um, Donald Trump and the organization inflating their, their assets so much so to get better deals on loans and insurance. You heard that uh, Miss Haba outside the courtroom saying, oh, nobody was nobody was victimized. No, Every loan was paid. Nobody missed a payment. Well, we do know that he did uh, file for bankruptcy about six times, right? But notwithstanding that, the issue isn't whether or not the loans were paid. The issue is whether the loan should have been given under those terms to begin with. And here's the thing. Just because the bank went along with it, say they turned a blind eye, you can have a, a loan officer be guilty of loan fraud giving you know giving the loans under favorable terms and have it not be in the best interest of the bank because had they put their real numbers down two things probably could have happened one the loan might not have been given at all number one or number two it would have been given on much different terms so the bank did lose out on money here's the other thing you take these three adults these three members of the Trump family, the offspring of DJT, what's the common thread for each one? Now, remember when Trump went into the presidency, he signed everything over into a trust with uh, Don Jr. Don Jr. is going to take over, right? So Don Jr. was the president of that trust. He's, the, he's running the day-to-day -day operations of the Trump organization. He should intimately know about loans, about financial condition, about and he, and he he couldn't even tell you what gap is, you know, the generally accepted county principles. But so what Don Jr. and and both of the other adults had to say was, you know, I really don't know. Uh, we hire we hire people to do this and that. You know, but his signature is at the bottom of these documents, right? And then Eric, in his deposition, what the fuck did he say? He said, I, I pour concrete. Who believes that? Who, he's never had concrete touch his hands ever. So all three of these people, Donald Jr., um, Eric, uh, and Ivanka, all sort of told the court, you know, I don't, I don't really know. I'm really not that familiar. I don't recall. And guess what you can do with that? That leaves it up for... You know, and here's why they're doing it. It leaves it up for the for the state for Letitia James to just hammer their own narrative. You don't remember? Well, we do, and here's the facts. And when you do that, you're toast. You're absolutely toast. Now, remember, the the judge in this case issued a ruling on count one, and they, and that's a finding up for the government saying that there was so much evidence that there wasn't a genuine issue of material fact. But there's, a, I think, five or six other counts that still need to be decided. But it really, it really comes down to, you know, was there fraud? And if so, what's the penalty? That's really what it comes down to. And he's already ruled that there was fraud. One of the things that I don't like, I don't like that Letitia James gets out there and she gives us an update every day. But I also don't like that, you know, Trump's lawyers and Trump, they get out there and just bash each other like nobody's business. Can I tell you what happens in a criminal context? When I have a homicide with, it with somebody, generally speaking, we get along. Not always. 
I, I get along pretty well with most prosecutors. We don't because we have we have lived a fight another day, right? We respect each other, don't agree with each other, but but let's let's see Miss Haba sitting outside the the courtroom uh, or the courthouse on the courthouse steps and see her mugging for the cameras. And to be honest with you, she looks like a deer caught in the headlights. She she has no business in that trial. How many trials do you think she's ever had? Not many. I guarantee it. Into this courtroom. I'm not here to hear what he has to say. Then why exactly am I being paid as an attorney? And why exactly are taxpayer dollars being used in this courtroom? The answer is very clear. Because Miss James wants to stand right here like she did this morning and call my client a liar. If the shoe fits, <laughs> see you later. Call the company fraudulent. If the shoe fits, see you later. And make a name for herself. She said this morning that the numbers don't lie and they won't lie in this case. Well, Miss James, I have a message for you. The numbers didn't lie when you ran for governor. And that's why you dropped out. Okay, what does it have to do with the veracity of the claims? That's one of the things that you see when, when Trump and his cronies, when they get in front of the cameras, they don't talk about the facts of the case. They don't talk, oh, Mar-a-Lago is worth so much more. Really? Is it really worth that? Is it really worth a billion and a half dollars? Nobody believes that. Nobody in the, nobody believes that. You know, is it probably worth more than 18 million? Maybe. Uh, but one of the things about that property, just so you know, is that you can't develop it. It, 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 it and can't be used as, as residential property. Anyway, let's listen to more of Ms. Haba. And the numbers don't lie when President Trump runs for office in 2024. Nope, they won't lie because they'll be running from a jail cell. <laughs> Those numbers are loud and clear. This country is falling apart. And if we don't stop corruption in courtrooms where attorneys are gagged. Where That's because you've been opening your fucking mouth. That's why. I mean, the, the judge wouldn't have done that, but he, he went after the judge's clerk. You don't do that. I've never done that in a million years. The judge's clerk is an extension of the judge, and they're to be respected and left alone. Attorneys are not allowed to say what they need to say to protect their client's interests. It doesn't matter what your politics are. Every you can certainly talk about the facts right now. I don't see you doing that. I don't see you talking about the facts. Everyone has a right in this country to get up and put a defense I don't care who you are. You have a right to hire a lawyer who can put objections on the record. You have a right to hire a lawyer who can stand up and say something when they see something wrong. But I was told to sit down today. I was yelled at and I've had a judge who is unhinged slamming a table. Let me be very clear. I don't tolerate that in my life. I'm not going to tolerate it here. Okay, then what are you going to do about it? I mean, I suppose you could file a uh, judicial ethics complaint, but standing out here on the courthouse steps and slamming the judge, who is the fact finder and the decision maker in this case, makes no sense. And you know what? You shouldn't either. Because not every American citizen gets a camera and a microphone. And what I'm seeing is such a demise of American judicial system and democracy. Miss James came out this morning and said that she knew Mr. Trump. She always calls him Mr. Trump because it kills her that he was the president. But the 45th president of this country, one of the best presidents we've had, has built a great country. One of the best what? Come on. Okay, I, I'm not going to hide my disdain for Donald Trump. I mean, because I just, whatever. But when you, when you, he, he, he's not one of the best presidents we've ever had. But th that's not what I'm reacting to. I, I'm not getting political here. But it is funny to listen to this. It's worth a ton more than that statement of financial condition. And she doesn't know how to get out of it because her politics won't allow her. She calls him a bully. She says he's going to bring out racial slurs. He's going to say things today and taunt her. Well, Miss James, you taunted him. What, what's the takeaway there? That speech had nothing to do with the facts of the case. She certainly could have talked about uh, the factual allegations and how this wasn't true that the, that the attorney general is putting forward and this wasn't true. 
or that that she's mis uh, misleading the court by this doing this or doing that. Did you hear one thing that she said that was corrupt? No, all you all she did was attack generally, and it's I, to me it's not effective. Um, and and really, what she's doing is she's playing to an audience of one. You know, and one of the reasons why lawyers get shut down by a court is because they don't know the rules of evidence. You have to know the rules of evidence. The rules of evidence are what guide anything that comes in and through the court, and what the court views. And you know, so if you sit, stand up and you're objecting, and they're frivolous objections, you're going to get shouted down by the court. In another case, this is the, the January 6th case that Judge uh, Chutkin in D.C., uh, Jack Smith filed a motion to basically put up or shut up with Trump as, in terms of uh, advice of counsel. Are you going to rely on advice of counsel as your defense? If so, we need discovery on that. And that's a preemptive move on his part. And so the judge ordered that. See, when you, when you rely on advice of counsel – you waive. You have to waive the privilege of what was of what the advice was and what the communications were. There's two main requirements. First, you have to show that you didn't withhold any information, relevant information from your lawyers. So if you lie to your lawyers about this or that, you can't use it. Second, you have to demonstrate that you try to apply the information that you know the advice that they gave you. If you can't show those two things, and it has to be both, not one or the other, then you can't rely on advice of counsel. And one of the things you have to do in a, in a federal case, you have to litigate your defense. I'll give you an example. I had a duress as a defense in a case, and the court said I couldn't use it. I didn't meet their requirements, uh, but I could use it in sentencing. So my client was looking at, you know, five, six years, and we got it down to a year. But we couldn't use it to a jury, you know, the, the defense of duress. Here, they take away that advice of counsel, and that's what Jack Smith is doing. Jack Smith is brilliant, and they are ahead of the game and ahead of Trump's team at every turn. Then that, that takes away a huge defense. So it was a preemptive strike from Jack Smith's point, and uh, and the judge ordered a bunch of information turned over, and and he, he's going to ju judge Chutkin is going to force their hand on that issue. Here's the nut of this episode, basically. Trump is going to lose, in my opinion, his case in Manhattan on from Letitia James. He's going to lose big. The damages that she's going after are over two hundred and fifty million dollars plus. Forbes just took Trump off. He said Trump's not a billionaire. I don't really care about that. But anybody that would be subject to the kind of thing that it, it means way more than $250 million, especially if he can't do business in New York anymore, what does that do to his hotels? What does that do to his businesses that he's got running? You have that. You have 91 counts that he's been indicted on on four different criminal cases. Plus, he's got other fraud cases that are out there. There's this, there's this one that nobody's talking about that involved these uh, video phones that was a multi-level marketing. N nobody knows about that. That's supposed to go to trial in January. If this was my trial schedule, I'd be pulling my hair out. And he looks like he's already started to try. <laughs> but he, he's got a mountain of shit he's got to do. A mountain. And... Let me tell you, the federal government has a 96-plus percent uh, conviction rate. And the reason they do is because they're patient. Remember how long it took for Jack Smith to come to the table and actually indict these cases? And the reason he did it, it took that long, is because he didn't want to indict until he was absolutely certain. I have no doubt that he's going to get convicted on just about everything. And look at all the people in Georgia. All the people in Georgia that are, are flipping – that as part of their uh, plea agreement, they have to testify against Trump and any other co-defendants. And that's, I think we're down to what, um, eight or nine people in that case, you know, left. And the rest of them are, they're all going to flip. They're all going to flip and you're going to left be left with just Donald Trump. Anyway, so and it doesn't actually please me 
to see him go down like this. What gets me is how arrogant and like that he is because it's not helping him. It didn't help. His sons didn't help him. He didn't help himself. And they're really not putting up a huge fight on this case. You know, they sit there and bitch about it outside, but they really don't have a whole lot going on in the courtroom. So we'll see how long you saw how long Letitia James case was, right? About a month or thereabouts. Let's see how long Trump's case is when, when, when they get the case later this week. It'll be their turn to put witnesses on. I bet it's not even a day or two, maybe a week tops. Oh, oh by the way, all right, so we're, that, we're done with Trump. You know, I, I could go on and on about Trump. I mean, it, it's fascinating to me because there's so much legal shit going on. So, and it's not just bash Trump because I don't do a whole lot of these videos. But I, I do find it interesting. So we'll keep you posted and just mark my words on this because I'm a trial lawyer. I, I can see these things happening and playing out. So um, I appreciate all the well wishes. I actually had a radiologist call my office, told me I should get this thing looked at. Well, I had it looked at today. And uh, so they're going to do a biopsy. And but the, my skin doctor said, uh, and his name is Dr. Growth, by the way. How, how great is that for a skin doctor, Dr. Growth? Anyway, but he didn't think it was anything that big a deal. We're going to do a little biopsy. We'll have it tested. And then we'll just go from there. So really appreciate all the support. Really appreciate all the, the well wishes and, uh, and all the comments. And keep the ideas coming because uh, we're going to do probably more long-form comment, uh, content. And uh, we're going to start doing – get Michael in front of the camera. I mean – you guys need to just kind of encourage him. He's he's he needs to be in front of the camera just as much as he's behind the camera. He's uh, he is the content genius. So we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, accompanied with Michael Rivers, our content genius. And we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and uh, we'll and Patreon. And we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm part of Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god.